Dio, io ni adi vizuri na mti yangu. Ah, bora nimefika nyumbani. O habari kipenzi changu? Kipenzi wangu, karibu nyumbani. There is a great evil among us. The nature of which many of us are not aware. But responsible for nonetheless. An injustice brought upon a race. A sin that stains the heart of our society. Men, women, children forced from their homes. <laughs> Families torn apart. A people stripped of all dignity. Dispersed to foreign lands to serve. Branded as property. Such is that vile practice called slavery. You may choose to look the other way, but you can never say again that you did not know of its existence. Thus spoke Mr. William Wilberforce. He then called the attention of the House to his proposal. The total end of the slave trade? Preposterous. Slaves are too important for our businesses. Wilberforce is fighting a losing battle. Slaves have no voice, and his is a lone one. Soon to die out, I'd say. Our merchandise is safe. Indeed it is, and a good profit it shall bring us. Besides, he'll never get the votes. We'll see to that. My dear, Sir Charles Fox to see you. Who? You do not know me, Newton. I've come straight from Parliament. I'll bring tea. And I'll get right to the matter. You've read the paper? I have. So you're aware of the current debate in Parliament on the subject of the slave trade, with the majority in favour of keeping it and a minority led by... William Wilberforce. I've known him since he was a lad. Probably sat through more of my sermons than my own wife. He's come very far. And he looks up to you. You might say that. Which is why I've come for your help. You were a slave trader, were you not? That was a long time ago. And you were a slave of sorts, weren't you? A longer time still. And an even longer story. I've got time, Newton. Go on. Uh, very well. Let's just say that in my youth, I was not the man I am today. No, wait! Ooh. My devoted and God-fearing mother had died when I was a child. And father, being a ship's captain, sent me to sea when I was ten. I grew up among sailors and learnt from the worst of the worst throwing caution and religion to the winds. You no good! On a stick. Well, looky what just landed into our laps. More Navy material. <laughs> I had deserted a merchant ship because I wanted to see my fiancé. Now I was conscripted, taken against my will by a naval press gang and forced into the Navy. Father tried his best to help me, but it was no use. However, he managed to obtain for me the rank of sub-officer in training, but 
I utterly despised it. <coughs> what in the... Shiver me timbers! Oh, Captain. Look to your duties. Now, or you'll be scrubbing the deck. And watch that mouth of yours. I've got sailors that have been at sea all their life, and even they're complaining about the filth that comes out of your mouth. Bad boy! Bad boy! Ah. You've got no scruples, Newton. You're treading on dangerous ground. Oh, you got no scruples, Newton. <laughs> and he was right. While on leave one day, I attempted to escape. I was caught and soundly punished. Oh, I was a stubborn wretch. Had enough? Uh, no! You Galumpus! Let him have a little more. The crew grew to despise me so much that to their great delight in it, so and mine as well, I was discharged from the Navy and I was transferred to another ship bound for the African coast. Good riddance. Now I can really do what I want. Little did I know that I was about to meet a man who would change my life. Clue. Amos Clough. He had travelled to Africa penniless and was now a successful businessman. A factory? Well, let's just say that's what we like to call them. It's here that our, uh, merchandise is branded, chained, forced into submission and then sold. I tell you, Newton, with 30 to 40,000 of these in demand every year, it's a fortune waiting to be made. So, when do I start? <laughs> You're a fast operator. All right, Newton. Welcome to the slave trade. I thought everything was fine. You would travel with Clo and capture slaves. Right. But before the trip. Ah. 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 Fever. Ah. You'll have to stay here, Newton. You'll be in good hands. P.I. helps me run the factory, and she'll look after you. Oh, yes, I will. <laughs> P.I. was Amos's mistress, and for some reason, she hated me. You want to eat? Eat that! Food. Now you are my white sleeve, my dog. Back to your kennel, dog, before I beat you. <laughs> it's nothing but a bone. Huh? We do not have much, but you need food. We will share with you what we can. Now eat. Go on. Eat. Thank you. Thank you. Imagine. Slaves. Concerned for me. I was in that state for about a year. When Clo returned, the mistress accused me of... Stealing from the garden. No, Clo I gave didn't. me no opportunity to defend myself. Get out, Newton, and never let me see you again. I was given to another slave trader, where I worked my way up until... I, too, began to capture natives and sell them. I lived as I pleased. Business flourished. And my employer was happy, but God had other plans. Oh, God? My mother had dedicated me to Christ, and I believe he was waiting for the right time to answer her prayers. 
News of what I'd gone through with Ko reached my father, and he arranged for a ship to take me home. As in previous times, I was so despicable that even the vilest of sailors shunned me. I was left alone, bored. Hmm, Euclid, Homer, God knows your heart. Though you run here and there, you will not find peace unless you give your heart to Christ. Resist sin and do not give in to it, and you will find what you are looking for. When it is morning, consider that you may not live to see the evening. If you are not ready today, how will you be ready tomorrow? Always be prepared. What if... What if these things are true? No. Why would I need God anyway? Why? Water 11 hours straight until I took my turn at the helm of the ship. We'll be all right, won't we, Captain? We need a miracle, Newton. Only a miracle can save us now. Oh, Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. I was struck by my own words. This was the first time I made mention of God with true respect. And I thought of the way I had steered my life so carelessly, so recklessly, and I realized then that my life was falling apart and so close to perishing. What hope is there for me? What hope? Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus! That was the hour I first believed. I was saved by grace, Sir Charles. Magnificent, merciful, wonderful, amazing grace. Yes, well, and then you went on to captain two slave ships. <sighs> I did. Three voyages, thousands of slaves, and now here you are. Pastor of one of the most prestigious churches in London. A man of influence and a grand following. And that is why I am here today to obtain my support on the question of slavery. Precisely. In support of it. What? A successful Christian convert who rescued so many souls from poverty and brought them to civilization and by it helped increase our economy, not to mention your own. I'm a businessman too, Newton. Slaves equal profit for me and many others in Parliament. In fact, many of us have a ship full of slaves on its way here now. Don't you see? You are the perfect candidate to debunk this myth that slavery is evil. What do you say, Newton? Newton? Newton! But, 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 but I, I... Good day, sir. Ow! Why, that blasted fellow! God, forgive me for having taken part in this horrible evil. Forgive me. Do something to stop the slave trade. Please, do something to stop it. How? 
Now, how was I supposed to know his views on the slave trade? I've been to his church, I've heard his sermons, not once has he denounced it. Well, for goodness sake, calm down. It's clear that Newton has no intention of bringing controversy upon himself or his church. Let things be. Our slave ships are safe. So long as he keeps silent. That's just it. What do you mean? Will he keep silent? Well, let's make sure he does. He was here on Tuesday, seeking your support. He even said it was the humane thing to do. And your answer was? Ah! Never mind. I know what it was. It's not the first death threat. But I will not speak for slavery, William. That I will not do. Then will you not speak against it? William is our friend, John. He'll understand. The things I allowed. The shame. Is it not more shameful to keep silence? You were a slave trader. God showed you what a despicable, terrible trade it was. You walked away from it. Now, I must do what I can to stop it. I've spent years preaching the good news of God's love to our congregation. Perhaps it's time they realize that extends to every person, including the slaves. No person should be bought or sold. You know it will cost you, John. Your congregation is made up of the wealthy, many with ties to slave labor. You will suffer loss. Are you ready for that? We will walk this path together, just like we've done before. I stand with you, dear. I will use my pulpit, William, and add my voice to yours. Then let us make such a noise that it will rattle all England. Let's make some noise. As scripture says, and then they will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or naked or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, as you did not do it to the least of these, you did not do it to me. Let us talk about the evils of the slave trade. Scripture tells us, whoever oppresses the poor to increase his own wealth will only come to poverty. So, let me again address the issue of slavery. And the Lord said, I have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. We cannot turn a blind eye to the evil of slavery. The Bible tells us that God heard the cry of the slaves in Egypt and delivered them. Today, God says again, let my people go, for their cry has reached my ears. Let my people go. Well, we've managed to make some headway. And partly empty my church. More people are talking about it, debating it, discussing it, but... But? Not much of anything else. Lord, what are we to do? Lord, what are we to do? Lock them in. At least it'll muffle their screams. Shame. 
I beg your pardon? People are talking about slavery, but... They have no sense of shame. I've been preaching about the evils of slavery, but I haven't fully admitted my own part in it, my own shame. People need to know what really goes on in the slave trade. They need to know enough to move them to action. Mary, I believe it's time I wrote my confession. Oh God, for the sake of your African children, let me speak with full honesty, even if it brings me trouble. My silence at such a time would be criminal, and I am bound in conscience to shame myself by this public confession, which I know comes too late to repair the misery I have caused over nine years. Families are taken by force and separated from each other without a second thought. The space between the decks was two and a half feet. The slaves would be packed. To cover the entire floor, chained close to each other, like books on a shelf. Let me describe the execution of slaves, when it was used to bring fear to the other slaves. The child that cried through the night so disturbed the captain that he took it from its terrified mother. When food was scarce, some slaves were simply thrown overboard. I've seen them sentenced to unmerciful whippings. Tortured for days. Chained below for months. Starved. Sold. Forced to work in inhumane conditions. Your book has made a huge difference. We do have the sympathy of a growing number of people, including some in Parliament. What we need now is votes. We need people that are willing to suffer a loss of business by voting against the slave trade. I will present a bill to Parliament. It will need votes to be passed. Then let us each to the task God sets before us. You write your speech. I have one more task to do. And let us trust God to do the rest. You've read my account? Oh, Newton. I have. And I respect your viewpoint, but... But? <sighs> no two ships are the same. No captains are the same. There are some who treat the Africans with more... With more... What, Sir Charles? You know, better rations, more space. You mean less of them chain slave to slave below deck? A little more time in the fresh air? Maybe, <laughs> instead of 30 minutes outside, 40 minutes? I've read Sir Thomas's account. The slaves were allowed to dance. Keep moving. They are occupied making beads. <laughs> Keep them busy. They are content, even joyful. <laughs> you complain, and this is what will happen. You think their journey a happy one, do you? Then indulge me. Replace that image of the slaves with that of your own family. And perhaps your next holiday should be aboard a slave ship. There is an image in my church and yours, Sir Charles. An image in every Bible in the land of one who took on the whipping, the humiliation, the nails, and ultimately the sins of you and me and everyone. Everyone, Sir Charles. That means Africans too. Is that not worth the loss of money? Think on eternity, sir. Think on that. Lord, I have done what I could. Your will be done. Great. 
I come not to accuse, but to appeal to your feelings of humanity. I beg you to put an end to the cruel practice of slavery once and for all. As is our duty to God and to those created in his image. And now, let us be guided by our conscience and put this important matter to a vote. If I may, if I may. William. We have it. What? We have the votes. Oh. We have the votes? We have the votes. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Did you hear that, Mary? We have the votes. We have the votes. Throughout the rest of his life, John Newton worked tirelessly to help free those in physical and spiritual bondage. And in 1807, under the leadership of William Wilberforce, the English government outlawed the slave trade in Great Britain. John Newton lived to witness the historic event, dying in December of that very year. Newton's story and his writings continue to influence generations to come. It's estimated that the song Amazing Grace, which highlights God's redemptive power, is performed over 10 million times each year. Studies calculate that throughout past centuries, approximately 13 million people were sold as slaves. It's estimated that millions more are trapped in some form of modern slavery today. My memory is nearly gone. But I remember two things, that I am a great sinner and that Christ is a great saviour.